Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this right here is Tom Clark's main event. What's up, kids? Welcome back to the program. I'm a little late. Uh, Let me tell you about my journey, my trek, my voyage home this fine evening here in the great state of North Carolina. Oh, my God in heaven. It was not enjoyable. Just let me be the first one here to tell you. Um, in fact, you could very well say it sucked. So I hit the interstate, the, the interstate known as I-40 here in the Carolinas, yes? Uh, and so I hit I-40, and guess what? Bumper to bumper, baby. I'm talking bumper to by God bumper as far as the eye can see. I don't see an end. It was horrible. You know what I mean? And so I'm thinking, eh, it's pushing 4 o'clock, whatever, traffic, right? So I get off the interstate. Terrible idea. Want to know why? Because guess what? It got even worse. Massive freaking accident off the highway. It was not pleasant. I'm not talking about the accident. I think everybody's okay. I mean, I hope everybody's okay. Am I centered? I think my camera's moved. We'll get there. (laughs) One of the bases will disappear. Christina's going to be hedging her way out, but Brandy's still here. Brandy? You're a fine girl. Anyway, uh, I made it. I'm here. Oh, my God, in heaven. Uh, our guest is not here yet, kids. He's on the way. I had to message him earlier to let him know that I was running a bit late. So, uh, anyways, uh, uh, he will be here when he gets here. We'll have Mr. Phil Lindsay joining us here today. And you know Phil, of course, from the 6M podcast. Let's bid everyone a fond... Uh, Friday. Happy for I don't know. Let's get to it. Renata Ramirez Rodriguez. How are you doing, my friend? Triple R in the house. Jumping Jeff Sharma. How you doing? Alicia D. Byers Brown. How you doing, my dear? Good to see you. Hey, hey to you as well. Carlos Martinez. How are you doing, my friend? Jamel Vegas. Jamel Vegas. From now on, you're just Jamel Vegas. I want to call you that every time. So from now on, you're just Jamel Vegas. Hope you're okay with that. What's up, Will? Uh, we are a little late. Yes, sir, we are. Hope you're doing well. Sugar Shane Odom in the house. What's going on? Come on, get back. Get back to where you once belong. Why are you giving me trouble? Everybody's giving me trouble. Wouldn't it be terrible if, like, suddenly my tech just died? That would be the way my day goes right now, man. I've had a good day. How's your week been? Ray All Day is here. JD, oh, go Viking. There you go, baby. I like them words. Them's fighting words. Them's good fighting words. Robbie in the house. What's up? Hey, hey to you, my friend. HVW owner and promoter, Mr. Gary Benfield. Please, everyone, make Gary feel welcome. August 20... I was about to get the date wrong. 27th. God, man, I apologize, dude. It's been a long week. (laughs) It's fast approaching, put it that way. Everyone, go follow Gary on the Facebook if you haven't done so yet. Please and thank you. Tim, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you, dude. Ron, how's it going? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, did you do it, Rob? I have, I apologize, dude, for not looking at your message. My apologies for that. Chris says there were accident more than a week ago. and that. Oh, God, Chris, don't bring me down, dude. Dang, I just got here. What's up, Eric Jackson? How you doing? Chad, too bad in the house. Ray is always, he knows just what to say. There's 20 of you here, but I only see three likes. This doesn't make me very happy. Look at me. This is not happy. Ready? Actually, that's more my fed up face. Ready? That's Tom fed up. I didn't have time to change from work. (laughs) I save from work. I work remotely, yes. But I, I, I tend to wear the company's swag, even though no one that I work with is around to appreciate it. And all the calls I'm on are usually audio, not video. So there you go. Smash the devil out of that like button. It made loads to me. And turn on the notifications bell, if you will. That, as well, 
would be awesome. We continue to wait on Mr. Phil Lindsay. Um, uh, we'll see uh, uh, what Mr. Lindsay has to say when he arrives. Um, everybody, uh, if you have not seen the show last week, we had Bruno Royce on local pro wrestler here in the Carolinas. Good show. That sucker's not been uploaded yet to the podcast platform. So if you've been looking for it and you're wondering why it hasn't hit the device of your choosing, my apologies. I just have, honestly, I've not gotten to it yet. I'm just being straight with you. Okay. So we'll get there eventually. Should be able to get up by this weekend and then we'll, we'll download or upload this one straight after it. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll get there again. Thank you guys as always for being extremely patient with me. You know, I do much, very much appreciate it. Um, How's everybody's week been? Man, have we got about some wrestling stuff to talk about here today? Um, I know that you know what we're talking about, and I know that you are probably, as I am, more than a little excited to get to it. Um, our guest is going to be here shortly. Let's see. <laughs> oh, there's some headlines. Let me just tell you. Uh, we'll get to it. So what has been your favorite thing that's happened this week, folks? Anything's happened to you? Chad, I will look again, my friend. I thought we were already friends on the Facebook. Are we not? Remind me. I'll go look. I got time. I'll look for it now. Talk amongst yourselves. Isn't that terrible? Kind of a host of mine. I just start going on my phone and I don't care about anybody else or anything. Hold on, Chad. I'll find you. Chad, too bad. I'm looking for that friend request, my friend. Till I get it, I can't call you friend anymore. I'm just kidding. These are just jokes. We'll get there. God, the amount of notifications I get on a daily basis is frightening. Frightening. There's one I've not responded to, but it's not you. It's someone else. Chad, is there a way to undo it and send it to me again? Is there a way to send it to me again? If you can, that'd be great. Gary, share the latest HVW news here, uh, dude. Share it right here. Put it in the comments. Let everybody marinate with it. You hear my chair creaking? I might have to upgrade my chair eventually. I just bought this thing. Was it last year I got this chair? I don't remember. The cushion is uh, its wearing thin, kids. I'm not going to lie to you. I spent a lot of time in this chair, kids. I'm not, I'm not playing with you. Um, all right, so let's see what comments we've got before we get cranky. I'm trying to uh, hang loose here for a bit till Phil rolls in. Charlotte Russell, Charlotte. Oh, Molly, Molly now goes by Charlotte. I'm gonna have to remember that. Uh, congratulations, you got married, you're out of your mind, but congratulations. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. For all I know, you are out of your mind. How do I know? Um, I will give it a shot if you send hook. I need to get that sound on here. Um, the revamp of the show is coming in short order or perhaps long order, depending on when I can get to it. It's coming, I assure you. I've got I've already got it planned out in my head, sketched out in my head about what I want it to look like. I'm gonna get some snazzy production on the on the uh on the front end of it for the opening uh intro. Get some animations happening for the uh, uh, Boing Studios production company. Um, uh, I think it's going to look good. In fact, I know it will. I'm not going to roll with it until it looks good, put it that way. I'm going to do what I can on my end and produce as much as I can, but I'm going to probably um, outsource the work and get it uh, get it looking good. I want it, to, uh, I want it to be snazzy. Do you know what I'm saying? Charlotte says Charlotte's her real name. Well, cool. Car says you think AEW is going to be in trouble with what Triple H is doing? Not trouble. No, I don't think. Uh, I don't think there's. Well, I shouldn't say there's nothing they can do to hurt AEW. But as what as any time I've been asked before about what can happen with a with a WWE or whatever from AEW, and my answer has been the same, and I maintain it uh, honestly that I don't think that that AEW can hurt the WWE per se, but that any any damage from WWE will be self inflicted. I think we've already seen that from the dude that was running the show. Self-inflicted, yes. Um, do what? What can they do to hurt AEW? If they're smart, they won't do anything to hurt AEW. Triple H is a smart guy, and and Triple H is a pro wrestler, also. Okay, he's not a a megalomaniacal corporate dude. We don't think. How do we know, right? 
I don't know that that offing any company or getting rid of any company per se would be on his agenda uh, or not even close to being on his agenda. Competition is good for business. It always has been and always will be, especially for pro wrestling, because the more places these men and women have to work, the better. And you guys and gals understand that. I got a smart audience. You all know what's up. You all know what's up. Um, Hold on. Jamel Vegas says WB had been so much better since he took over. I'm hearing that. I'm I'm not going to say that I'm never going to give it a, ch- a chance again, but I haven't watched WB religiously in a couple years, if I'm being straight. I just haven't. Like, I'm aware of it. I stay up to date on headlines. I stay up to date on news and whatnot, and I dig in where I want to. But if you're asking me if I sit back and watch full-time, the answer is no. So, yeah, I just don't, man. Sorry. Um, they just let me down so very much. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's see here. Um, what else we got going on, kids? Ron says they have a niche market. WWE won't hurt them. Only thing they can hurt AW is Tony Khan if the rumors of his backstage attitude are accurate. Don't believe anything you hear, Ron. Don't believe anything you hear. I might rant a little bit today just so everyone's aware. Don't believe anything you hear. The only thing you have to go off is nothing. And this is not directed to you. But I I, I see people in this space quoting, quoting websites that are less than reputable. And it's okay if you don't know they're less than reputable. But I will educate those who need educating. Not that I'm the smartest guy in the room. Trust me, I never will be, okay? But I know what websites are accurate and are doing a good job and doing the work. And I know who, who isn't. So yeah, if you're ever curious, I'll let you know. But yeah, it's um, um, we will wait and see what happens. You can do what any anybody here can do whatever they want. You can get tripped up in in rumors and gossip and innuendo. If that's what you want to do, go with God, brother. I can't stop you. But I I, I say the same thing every time. Wait it out. You know what I mean. And if it happens, it happens, whether it's good or bad. Um, this getting tripped up in the gossip shtick, I just don't understand that. Unless someone has an inside source in a locker room, I'll never understand why people get so tripped up in gossip and rumors and and trying to, I don't know. Sometimes it feels like they're just they're just angling for um for drama and turmoil. I just don't understand that. Why can't this just be fun? Do you know what I mean? I just don't get it. Gary, I don't know that you can add a picture here, dude. I don't think you can. Can you? If it's on the HVW page, I could share the screen. Um, before we go any further, kids, let's welcome our guest host today. You know him from Bleacher Report. You know him from Grapsity. Please go follow that fine podcast, if you will. Those guys are doing the Lord's work. And he's also, at this point, you might as well just say, he's my regular full-time co-host because he just about freaking is. It's rare that I ever have anybody else in the other chair. Uh, but Phil has, uh, has uh, took the show leaps and bounds above what it was when it was just yours truly. Uh, but yeah, uh, he is here, kids. And there's a good introduction. He better like it. The one and only, <laughs> he doesn't have to like it. I'm not going to make him. The one and only Mr. Phil Lindsay. What's up, dude? How are you? What's going on? Sorry I'm late. Uh, good, man. Just had a lot going on. Um, I had to, I had, I was having some technical difficulties and then uh, my dad was outside. My dad is actually sitting right next to me. Uh, so, oh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> is he there now? Yeah, he's there. Oh, he say he hello to your dad. You. Oh, oh he say hello to your dad. Yeah, <laughs> he's hello. Um, he's Sweet. sitting back. Of course, he can't hear you because I have you in the headphones. That's all good. Uh, uh, and I'm I'm digging the new tech. I dig it. You you finally look professional, Phil. Just so you know, does look professional. Does appreciate it. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Phil, you know the kids. Kids, please make Phil feel welcome and tell him hello. Uh, let's see. Tim says the next trio's champions are Ray, Tom, and Phil. Uh, Phil, you're younger than Ray and I, I assume, so you get to take all the heat during the match. I'm standing on the apron. I'll take the hot tag and come in like a house of fire. Sure. That works for you. I'll take the hand sure. spot on uh, Oedo's guy. <laughs> awesome. Uh Let's see uh, uh, what what uh, comments have I have I uh, missed here, kids? Uh, Chad, I will check, my friend. I won't forget about you. I'll check. No worries. 
Um, so Phil, we've not gotten into anything big here. Uh, we were kind of just waiting it out, having a little chit and perhaps a little chat. So we're calling today, however, headlines with Phil Lindsay. Oh my <laughs> God. Your Have name is segment. Up in lights, Phil. It's it's so glorious you can't stand it. Um let's go over some headlines. Uh, I'm gonna bring this up. And this is not Tom beating a dead horse, kids. If you want to think so, that's fine, I suppose. But you and I have only talked about this in blurbs, so I have yet to get your full-blown public reaction to the big, biggest news of the year, maybe the decade in the wrestling business, because we just haven't, we just barely just talked about it. This Vince McMahon story will not go away. Now the, the dollar figure is $19 million, $19 million, kids! Phil, help me make sense of this. How many more... How much bigger is the total going to get? Is any more women going to come out of the woodwork? What is happening here? So the last figure we heard was five million, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I am not surprised by that. I'm not surprised that more details are coming out. Um, for Vince to retire the way he did, I figured that there was going to be more coming out. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe when the Wall Street Journal. Uh, just put out the information about this five million that is uh, in lieu of the pending investigation, right? So I don't think the SEC investigation is finished yet, right? I think so. Yeah. Whew. And I mean, even if it has, like, if that's independent of what the SEC may or may not have found, that's it's a pretty big deal. Uh, so I don't know. It it doesn't really bode well for him if uh, you're under investigation and stuff continues to come out about you. Um, I was one of those guys that was like, ah, this isn't going to affect Vince. He'll, he'll die in a chair. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, uh, apparently this is bigger than I thought. Um, and for it to have gotten this big, that, that really tells you something. Didn't it start? Tell me if I'm wrong. It seemed like it started at five, went to 14. Now it's 19. Cause it seemed like it would maybe my math's off, but I, I think the last figure I saw was 19 million total. Like it just keeps getting bigger. I just and yeah, and I million total. I think total. I think yeah. So like I have I have heard people make the the comment of I don't care about it. What I don't care what he did. It's just it's his money. I'm like, no, it's not. No, if if you are the owner of a publicly traded company, it is no longer your money. Like you can't just no matter who you are, publicly traded or not, if you own a business. Well, it's my business. Yeah, but dude, there's regulations in place that prohibit you from just taking whatever you want to take. I mean, it's there's one thing yeah. to pay yourself a salary, but dude, this is... Well, I, I guess he just thought he would never be caught. Well, if... I suppose the money that they're finding is his own money, but the, the, the question comes into play that if you are using that money to pay people that are employed by WWE... Um, you do that does look like an expense right you do have to you do have to report those kind of things um, right and you know if you got other st- shady stuff around it like you've got them signing NDAs i mean <laughs> that just of course raises the question why why are they signing NDAs if there's nothing wrong here why don't you want them to talk about it yeah good point that's that's yeah because you got you, if you're paying them on the record it's got to be on the books you have to justify where that expense is going so yeah um i think we all we all kind of knew the guy was shady to say the least all these years dude i continue to be amazed and perplexed and and dumbfounded at how people continue to support this guy and to this day will not leave his side i just i don't it 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 blows my mind that people still will continue to support him. I mean, I said this on the show a few weeks ago, Phil, and I stick by it. People accuse the other company of being a cult atmosphere. This is a cult, man. When when you refuse to leave the side of this guy, come on, dude. I don't get it. Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was pretty uncomfortable uh, that week when he retired, and you had uh, the crowd chanting "Thank you, Vince," and some of the other stuff going on. It's a, it's a little uncomfortable. And that's not to say that he doesn't deserve uh, praise for what he did for the business. But it's just one of those moments where you probably should read the room. Uh, with with the context of whatever's going on at, right now, I, I just don't think it's the right time. 
Agreed. Alicia says, I just want to say well played Triple H and Steph because they're the ones that got the most out of that. I mean, there's something to be said. And listen, not for nothing. I'm not suggesting anything. And no, I haven't heard anything. But, you know, not for nothing. Just because it looks like they haven't done anything. We don't know anything right now. We assume it was all Vince and nobody else. But if, and I'm not putting it out there to say it's going to happen. But if a story were to come out that Stephanie had a hand in moving money around, and was helping cover his tracks. I'm not saying anything, but then suddenly it it gets a lot deeper than what it currently is. Like, has there been any suggestion on from anybody that this goes further than Vince, or just Vince and Laurinaitis, and that's it? No, um, so far it's just been on Vince and and Laurinaitis so far. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if others knew about knew about it, but of course that's harder to prove. Excuse me. Yeah. Sugar Shane says, what happens when Linda divorces him and takes him for... I think there's more money in it for her to stay, honestly. They're already divorced, I thought. Are they? I thought they were already divorced. Um, I had no did idea. He, didn't he reveal that in the in the Pat McAfee interview? Maybe he did. That's a good question. Yeah, I thought um, that was I had one no of them, those hidden gems from that interview that he said, uh, when I was married... Um, and wow. people are like, what do you mean when you were married? Aren't you still married? <laughs> I don't Man. I don't think that's the exact quote, but yeah, it was something like that. He kept that uh uh he kept that under wraps for sure, because I don't think any of us knew anything like that. Um it's a wild time, man. Like you, I, I was convinced this guy was gonna die in the chair. I really thought that. Because it, you know, they'll have to cart him out when the when the time comes. But yeah, he's um and supposedly, if you believe anything that you're hearing from certain people, you know, on the, some of the websites that we talk about and look at, I mean, he's really not there. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Do we know if he's backstage or is he really home? I, I think he's gone. Um, I did think it was funny. Um, we talked about it in Grab City. Um, uh, our co-host, Righteous Reg, said uh, when uh, Pat McAfee had that, uh, that brawl into the it would have been hilarious if the camera turned and he was still sitting behind the desk. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, for sure. Um, but no, I think he's at home. I, I think that, uh, it, cause it's, it's different. If, if it's just like you're accused of wrongdoing and you know, you can't really do anything with it. That's a little bit different, but the sec is, is serious business. Like once they get involved and in, you're a publicly traded company now, you're not just a, a wrestling company. Um, you're held to different standards. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's mind blowing, dude. I mean, you never say never, kids. All right. Um, and you know, I'm gonna segue from that to this. Ever since Triple H sort of took over, as they say, um, we're seeing the return of certain people. Um, this really feels to me like Hunter's like, all right, he, all right, he's gone. Let's get him back. Get him on the phone now. And he's just gonna call up everyone that was released that he disagreed with their release. And, you know, you hear things like Triple H didn't like this. He didn't agree with that. How do you know? Because he's never he's never would have went on the record against his father-in-law. And I wouldn't either. But, like, no. now that people are coming back, it kind of feels like, man, maybe he did have a problem when they were released to begin with. What do you make of, of people that are returning? And do you have any predictions of who we still have to see, perhaps? Uh, I think it's a good thing for now um, because – I do think that the people that he's brought back um, didn't really get a fair chance on the main roster. Um, and I absolutely understand him saying that these are people that I worked with personally and, you know, I want to see them win. So I need to, br I want to bring them back and give them a spot where they can succeed on the main roster. Um, yeah. I don't mind it now. Uh, am I as excited for all of them? No, but that's, of course, my personal opinion. Um, I'm very excited to see Dakota Kai back. I think that it was a mistake to let her leave. Mm. Uh, I'm curious to see how the cross stuff goes. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of him on NXT, but I am curious enough to see how he looks now with the same presentation from NXT. Um, Dexter Loomis is kind of... I'm on the fence with Dexter Loomis. Um, but... Yeah, I definitely could see more people coming back. I, I the 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 obvious one for me is Gargano. Gargano makes the most sense. 
He does because honestly, dude, if 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 he were to join Tony Khan's company, he'd still be a star. He'd still have a good spotlight. He'd still have cool interest music. He'd still look great. His wife would probably be there eventually. He'd still have some nice matches, perhaps great matches. Great. He'd still he still have some nice spots. We'd still be cheering him. Still be calling him Johnny Wrestling, but he wouldn't be the the guy. Now, not that he would be the guy in WWE either. I don't think that's going to happen. But I I think you're right. I think he'll have. He and Hunter seem to be really tight, and like Hunter's high on him and Champa both. So like, yeah, I don't know. He's a big HBK guy, um, and he seemed um, really happy in NXT. He didn't really want to leave, Um, and I I think that he would have wanted to move up to the main roster if he believed that Creative um, trusted him. And I feel Mm -hmm. like with Triple H in charge of Creative, that might give him you know, some comfort and some trust level because he has rapport with him. Uh, but I don't know. If you ask me, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, I was thinking he would be perfect for Ring of Honor. Mm. Um, but now, I mean, it's night and day. Are you going to go with something that's still rebuilding a, a, a product or are you going to go with the biggest wrestling company in the world with... Uh, Triple H now in charge, and your friend now on the main roster. Probably going to go with WWE. Yeah. Uh, and I could be wrong, but that's just how it looks. Uh, uh, another one, Bray, makes a lot of sense yep. um, going back. Um, I could definitely see him coming back. Um, and I'm sure there are probably other NXT guys that watched out there come back. Very true. Um, Ron, with a question of... If Gargano comes back, would you rather see Champ and Gargano as singles competitors or DIY? I'll answer that real quick for myself. I think you keep Gargano and Champa as far away from each other as possible. I think they are CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, and you don't bring them together unless you want to have an amazing feud that people talk about for years. I just don't know why you'd ever have them cross paths again. I mean, what's your take on that? Um, it's very tempting to say DIY because the company could use some tag teams. Hmm. Uh. But see, if you if you do DIY again, I just feel like they're going to be tempted to rehash the entire breakup and the feud again. And I don't know if we need all of that. Um, either way, I, I figure Triple H will find something for Gargano to do and come back. Mm. Um, any chance? I'm not going to sing the song. <laughs> any chance at all that that Carrion Cross beats Roman Reigns? I don't know. I I feel like Friday basically made it seem like he's going to get a push um, for Mm. him to be in the main event spot uh, and attack Drew. That seems to tell me he's going to feud with Drew after Clash of Champions. I mean, not Clash of Champions, Clash of Castle. Uh, I don't know. Um, I I feel like he's a good option um, because I feel like the guy that beats Roman kind of needs to be a guy that hasn't been tarnished by WWE's booking. Um, it kind of needs somebody to be somebody that's not on TV. And that's why Cody became the front runner when he came in, because he's he has none of the limitations of what WWE was doing before. You haven't seen them book him poorly. Um, he's a clean slate. So you mm. kind of need somebody that's either a big enough star that can compete with Roman or someone that's a clean slate. Do we like cross with hair or without hair? Because I say no hair. I think it looks great. Um, really? I, yeah. I think it looks great. Uh, I think the. I think you forget uh, until you see him again just how big the guy is. Yeah. Um, and him standing next, standing across from Drew or Roman, it definitely has a better visual than some of the other guys on the roster. Good point. And he, uh, that match he had with Suzuki a month or two back was fun. That was a good match. Yeah, listen, I think Cross is better than people give him credit for. I, think, I agree. I think that he has a lot of things going for him, but I also think that people have, um, what for for whatever reason, turned on him because of you know what they think his political views are, or the way his his stuff in NXT ended. You know, we were talking off mic last night too about the presentation. How it's not really of our our cup of tea, but like. You know, I we've seen really long presentations before on the main show, so we'll see what they do. 
Chad Too Bad says the story I hear is USA Network is not happy that they don't have a champ. They may be splitting the belts back up to have on one for please, Raw. Have please, you heard please. anything? God, back to this again. I I haven't heard anything on it, but I've been saying it was a mistake from day one. Please yeah. split the titles back up and get a title on Raw. They need a world championship. Yeah, and I say back to this again because I, why did you even do it to begin with? I I just don't. I I don't know. I I mean, we could all sit here and guess why they put both belts on, other than he's red freaking hot. But no one stays red freaking hot forever. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just question. I just question the the foresight of going, hey, this guy is the hottest guy in our company. Let's put both titles on him and completely sink the main event scene of one of our shows. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Ricardo says, where does this leave Cody as a main event guy under Triple H? I don't think they had the best relationship. I'll go ahead. I'll let you take that first. What do you think? I don't know because I, I don't know what their relationship is, but Cody is clearly a Triple H guy. He clearly likes Triple H. Um, he models a lot of his, his character and some of his presentation around Triple H. Um, so... I'd be really surprised if he stopped pushing him just because of the way that he went out of Hell in a Cell. I feel like he's the hottest he's been in years. Hmm. And so I feel like it would be a mistake to just completely throw that away. But we've seen it happen before. so um, I'm with you. I, I think he is a Triple H guy. And I think that I think if nothing else, Hunter respected all that stuff with the throne and the sledgehammer and all that. And I wouldn't be surprised at all. And I'm just throwing it out there, kids. I wouldn't be surprised at all if before the show that night, Cody sent him a text and said, you ought to watch the show tonight. You'll, you'll laugh. I, I think you'll like it. Just watch the opening. Watch the first of my match. Just as a way to say, this is for you, pal. I mean, I think that's cool. These guys, and when I use the word rib, I don't mean it like they're you know bad toward each other, but like it's just a matter of this is a wink to this other guy. It doesn't mean I hate his guts. It's just, and plus it gives the fans something to hang on to because fans went nuts over that forever. Like, oh, yeah. it's it's a statement. No, it's not. It's just something to do. Hey man, sometimes stuff happens and it ages poorly, man. Um, hmm. We just saw uh, Brian kick that uh, black and gold X in not too long ago either, and now you've got the guy that is the was the face of black and gold nxt that's now running everything so life comes at you fast (laughs) i like that very good tim says cross is the perfect guy perfect storyline and perfect champion to take the title from roman and bring it back to raw i mean honestly tim i think he's all they got right now if they're serious about it but i don't know if they're serious about it is this just this could just be they're going to stall roman until cody's healthy enough to come back i don't know um, I think Cross could be an option for now. I will disagree that he's the perfect option because I've been saying since January that Seth Rollins is the perfect option to take the t- title off him and bring it back to Raw. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Robbie says, I think they need to 86 them. It's off topic, but I thought I'd put it up. The Max Dupree stuff, the guys who used to wrestle are reduced to being models. Which, and, you know, and to Robbie's point, they make giants into jokes. They Shanky is dancing. Who called that one? Me. Because it's not hard to call, Phil. Whenever they get a big guy, you can pretty much say, oh, I give it a month, he'll be dancing. He's going to dance. Uh, He's always going to dance. Vince Vince loves his dancing. So you knew it was coming. Um, I don't know. The, the I know that some people think that the MMM stuff is pretty funny. Uh, I'm indifferent to it for the most part. Uh I like that it gets uh, Masse on TV and it gets uh, Mansoir on TV. Uh, but other than that, I did take it or leave it. I, I just still don't see how you look at L.A. Knight. I'm sorry, Max Dupree and go, <laughs> this guy is a, man, is a manager. Like, just look at this guy. This guy's, a, this guy's a great talker. He's huge. He has a presence. But just get this guy in the ring. Let him wrestle. Um, it's just, it, to me, it's another example of they sign somebody just so the other guys can't have him and then they don't know what to do with him. That's what it amounts to. I mean, you know, for what, about a straight year, they just loaded up that NXT locker room with guys just so AW couldn't have them. And then like six months down the road, they cut like 20 people. Like, yeah, this is what they do. Um, I actually forgot people that might come back. Uh, the report is that top dollar of row will be at SmackDown tonight. 
Um, I don't know how mm. true that is, but um, could be looking at a hit row returning without Swerve, of course, of course, because he's yeah. To AW. Who do you replace Swerve? Who would you put in it? If you had to, if you had to book it yourself, who do you put in Swerve spot? Somebody from NXT. Kind of weird without Swerve. I just can't even it imagine is. it without Swerve. Um, but it, if you just want a new tag team to come in, because again, could use some tag teams. Um, I don't see anything wrong with having uh, Top Dollar and Adonis back. They could work tag teams and possibly bring B Fab back. Mm-hmm. Not the worst idea in the world. Jeff says, I honestly, don't mind Shanky dancing. It's funny because in character, Jenner hates it. I like Shanky a lot, actually. I really do. But the point of this, <laughs> I do. The point of this, though, is that, yeah, I, I, dude, it's like it's like all right. We have this. We have a point guard. He's the best shooter we have, or he's the best th- three point. He's the best threat we have. He he shoots lights out. We want him to dunk. Yeah, but put him on the perimeter. No, no, no. We don't want him to do that. We just want him to take it to the hoop. But he's six one. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, to me, it, that's what it kind of feels like, you know. It, it's it's Westbrook right now in the Lakers, man. It's uh, mm. we've got a good playmaker, but we want him to play off guard. But why? Right. Well done. Yeah. Mello could hit, could lead hit row. Uh, maybe I I personally think Mello and Trick together are a better act on their own. Mm. Um. I don't know. Shane says WWE was doing what they do with maximum male models. Look at how the new day started. The gimmick was so dumb it caught fire. But that's Shane. I'll counter you to a certain extent. I agree, but also that was the three of them getting together and saying, "If this is what they're going to give us, we're going to find a way to make this work. We're gonna we're gonna work our tails off till this thing gets over." And they made the best out of the worst gimmick. Let's give the three black guys the church gimmick. What are we doing, kids? But Phil, instead of buckling to, I hate this job. I'll just do whatever you tell me. They got it over. Like, I think it's two different examples, Hill. Shane, I appreciate your point, but I think it's two different examples. I mean, I don't know. Listen, they can make it work. Um, there's not. There's nothing saying that you know those three guys can't go out there. Well, and Gal now can't go out there and make it work. Um, but. I, I this feels like it has a short shelf life. <laughs> just from, yeah, just looking at it from afar, it just looks like it has a short shelf life. And they've done because there's no such thing as an original gimmick anyway, unless you're Danhausen. Honestly, have, have they wrestled yet? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> That's an excellent question. I but they, you know, have. Rick Model. They uh, Rick Model. Rick Martell. Excuse me. They've done this stuff before. Like it's no original gimmicks. Unless you're Dan Housen. I'll never not say that, by the way. No original gimmicks, unless you're Dan Housen. Because everything else has been taken and done. That's it. I mean, you're just recycling. Um, if you had to give a broad overall 10,000-foot perspective of what you see within the next six months to a year for that company, do you see such sweeping changes with Hunter being at the helm? Or is this gonna have, thing going to have to take time? see where we are. He's still got investors to make happy, still got networks to make happy. Maybe Triple H's brand of wrestling doesn't make networks happy. If you had to throw a prediction out there, do you think that we get to some semblance of normality for that company in a year's time, or are we still going to be watching 20 camera cuts in an interview segment for crying out loud? You know what I mean? That's why I can't hardly watch product anymore, Phil. I watched... um, I don't know what match it came after, but it was Shayna Baszler having a stare down with Liv Morgan, and I counted 22 camera cuts, and all they did was jaw at each other. <laughs> Here's the funny bit. I showed this to my wife, and I said, I looked at her, I said, don't say anything, just watch. Halfway through it, she goes, oh, my God, the camera. And I was like, right? And I hadn't even prepped her yet. Do you think anything's really going to change? And if, if so, is it just going to take time or what? Um, I think there will be incremental changes. I don't think there will be any real sweeping changes. Because at the end of the day, uh, Triple H and Steph are still McMahons. Um, um, For better or worse, the McMahons are still in power. Um, Now, does that mean uh, that Raw won't possibly get better or SmackDown won't possibly get better? Absolutely not. I do think that Raw will get better. Uh, Just in the last two weeks of watching Raw, um, Raw is better than it's been 
in weeks. Um, mm. But I don't think things will change enough from what it was. I do think that there will be uh, storyline changes. I do think that there will be personnel changes in terms of the wrestlers. Um, but I don't think Kevin Dunn's going anywhere anytime soon. So I think your camera cuts will still be there. Um, I think the way the product is presented will still be the same. I think that most of the culture around the product will still be the same. Um, but I do think that the morale will change because I think at the start of the year, the morale in their locker room was pretty low. And from what I've seen so far, it seems like uh, there's more optimistic optimism around the company from a fan point of view and from a worker point of view. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's, I think there will be some good things, but I think that there will be some constants. Nice. Um, yeah, I um, look and, and I'll, I'm the first one to admit when he gets something wrong As as I've said, this is not an exact science and I'm not one of those people who makes crazy predictions and then runs from them. I'm not that guy. I said for years, they'll never give this a triple H. He's a wrestling guy. It's a publicly traded company. He's not the guy in charge. Um, I'll back off from that to a certain degree and say I was wrong. They gave him way more than I thought they would because they had. They gave him creative, which I never thought saw that was going to happen. But I won't back down back from the other a corner to do it, though. And, <laughs> thank you. It's just what I was going to say. You took the words out of my mouth. They, they had to be forced to do it. I mean, and plus, on top of that, he's not the only guy there. His wife's there, but so is this other con guy who could be a con man. I don't know. But uh, I don't know, dude. I'm with you, Phil. I think it's going to take time. I think yeah, it's going to take time. Yeah, I, I, I don't. It's not like this is a completely different regime because um, there are a lot of Vince guys that are still there. I mean, Trips and it's and it's hard of hearts, even though he may have different philosophies, is a Vince guy. Hmm. Yeah, good call. Um, I I don't know if you're still here. Uh, Gary, but I finally got the message here. So uh, uh, let me know if I can announce this. Have you announced this publicly? I don't want to just drop alpha, and as they say in my shoot job. I just don't want to put that out there unless I can. But I got just got news about a, a fairly big name coming to HVW, so that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, we could get into a lot more nuanced stuff about WWE, but I just want to hit on the major stuff uh, that's really going on right now. Um you're back to watching both shows now, yes? How do you have time? I mean, I don't I don't watch nearly as much as I used to. At one point, I was watching uh, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, 205 Live, NXT mm. UK, uh, and trying to keep up with other stuff like Impact, New Japan, uh, NWA sometimes. Uh, so I do watch less than I was. Um, I, I still can't get into new NXT. It's just, just not, it's just not my cup of tea. I've tried. It's just, it's just not for me. Um, but I, I am attempting to watch Raw and SmackDown at least. Yeah, and honestly, uh, and I'm gonna throw this out there because they have he has made it official. Um, Rampage Jackson is coming to HVW. Wow. Um, yeah, it's gonna happen on Friday, September 9th. HVW Battleground. Wow, there you go. Meet and greet. Opportunity with former UFC and movie star Rampage Jackson. B.A. Baracus. The other B.A. Baracus. Um, I don't even know what Rampage has been up to. Uh, yet. Have you heard anything about Rampage lately? Nope. Something else. Uh, good for them, man. Uh, everybody stay tuned with High Velocity Wrestling. Um, as you guys may or may not know, uh, I was the uh, the social media guru for HVW for the past two and a half, three years, whatever it's been now. But uh, duty calls with the full time uh, shoot job, right? So, um, yeah, I've had to uh, uh, let go of the reins of that, which uh, you know it wasn't pleasurable. But as I said, duty calls. So yeah, all the best to HVW. We will be there Friday, August, or excuse me, Saturday, August twenty seventh. I'll be calling uh, play by play that weekend. So that'll be a fun show can't wait for that's inferno by the way kids um let's see let's try to get some thoughts in here before we switch gears and talk about something else um that's an a dub question chad hold on to that uh tim asking a question about rainmaker uh we can definitely get there eventually 
Um, da, 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 da. If that's it for the WWE content, we'll move on. We'll move on. It's. I mean, I'm totally fine with moving on. Uh, so let's change gears. Hey, no one wanted to talk about it. I gave him a chance. If you start now, I'm not going to take it. All right? You had a shot. Let's change gears. Let's talk about some aid. Uh, man, uh, I, I have... Um, man, I got to choose my words carefully. I, I see and read things in this space about shows, and I just roll my eyes because I... To each his own. Phil, as you know, this is all subjective. This is not NFL stats. This is not so-and-so's field goal percentage. These are not facts we're getting ready to discuss here. These are opinions given by two dudes on your screen. You may or may not agree with either one of us, or you may love both of us. I don't know. These are not facts. These are opinions. These are not stats. Have I got everyone's attention? <laughs> But still, Phil, when I see reactions to things and people are just beside themselves, either angry or desperate or homicidal, I don't know. It blows my mind how people get so upset. I see backlash coming against AEW every day. Usually it's about blood. It's about hardcore. It's about they have too many talents. They're not doing enough with so-and-so. Time for the question again. 10,000 foot overall perspective on how AEW is now not where they will be but what's your opinion right now on how the company's doing overall um i do think the summer uh showed some of aw's flaws um and i do think uh the amount of injuries they had to deal with uh ended up uh causing some uh i don't want to say poor big booking choices but uh it caused for some television that people might not have enjoyed. Hmm. Um, but I do think they've recovered well. I think uh, I think Mox has done a great job of being the main guy. I think he's carried their main event scene for the last two months while Punk was out. Um, but I think right now there's got to be more optimism around the company now that uh, not just Punk is back, but uh, Brian is also back and we're getting teases of Kenny being back before All Out. Um, I think they're in a good spot going into All Out and uh, their new New York uh, shows. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think so, too, and I'm with you. There's There's been some bumps along the way, but we got Mance Warner on TV last week. I can't be too upset with that. I'm, I'm a Mance Warner guy. I have been for a long time. Um, you and I were talking off mic about that a little bit last night, but I'd like to get into it here live. Um what about this notion? You know where I'm going, right? Yeah, what about this yeah. notion that, well, we have to have his bio. We have to have, we have to know who he is. But I mean, do you agree with that? Do we have to know a guy's, you know, birth records and social security number in order to accept no. him on our TV? No. I, I thought that discourse was very strange. Um, people going, oh, we don't know who Mance is. Are we supposed to know who this guy is? No. This is a chance to introduce you to a new guy. And you decide, hey, am I interested or am I, I not? If you're not interested, that's perfectly fine. But I felt like that was a good introduction to him in terms of the promo he cut and the match he had because the match was really good in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, man, we got Ricky Stark on TV with less information. Look where Ricky Stark is now. Uh, good we job. got Eddie yeah. Kingston on television with less information. I mean, that was the whole point of uh, – Cody doing the open challenges at one point to get surprise debuts and to introduce the AEW fan base to new wrestlers. So and, I didn't see a problem with this. And Phil, also the point, I think we have to make this point. WWE, everyone on their roster is on their roster. They are employed as independent contractors by that company. You're not going to see many surprises unless they just signed someone away or brought up a surprise NXT talent. But with AEW, guys and gals are going to get tryouts. It may just be on Dark or Elevation, or it could be on the main shows. And it's going to happen. And this won't be the last time. Wasn't the first, won't be the last. How are people not accustomed to this three years in? I'll never understand. I mean, where does the backlash... It's, backlash doesn't come from AEW fans. It's coming from the other side who just want to hate a company from a distance, I guess. I mean, it's the only thing I can figure. I, I know that there are some people that think that AEW is a niche product and that um, they expect you to know indie wrestlers. They expect you to know about Japanese wrestling. They expect you to know about Joshi's. Um, 
But you don't really have to. I mean, you could go in not knowing anything about these these wrestlers or anything about other companies and allow AEW to introduce you to them. And then you can go and try check these things out on your own. Um, perfect example, I didn't know anything about Kanosuke, Kanosuke Takeshita um, at all. AEW has completely introduced me to this guy, and I think he's fantastic. Everything I've seen of him has been tremendous. And it's only made me go out of my way to go and look at other matches. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what that's what wrestling is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to introduce you to people and get you excited. Why are we complaining about why are we complaining about learning about somebody new unless we just don't care about this person? If you don't just if you just don't care about Mance, just say you don't care. Yeah. One word, six letters, Google. Yeah. It's real easy. We've all and got if, phones. And if you don't care to, just don't. Don't. Just Yeah, let it go, right? Ricardo says AW needs to put Wardlow in a real feud for the TNT title. Miro is in the background just waiting for a shot. I won't disagree. But I will say this, if if I'm the guy booking him, and I'm not, okay, they can do whatever. If I'm the guy booking Wardlow, I have him squash everybody in his path for a good two months, honestly. And I, I know what people can say, well, that doesn't do much for the title. does a whole lot for Wardlow, honestly. And yeah, I, and I don't know. That's what I see. Yeah, I, I, I know that people love Miro, and I know that for a lot of people, he's their favorite TNT champion. I don't think he should go back to the TNT title scene. I think that you can use him in other feuds now because he's so popular. Um, Cause that's what that title is supposed to do. It's supposed to raise his profile so that he can go and do things independent of the title. And mm. so that he can move up the card. Because to me, um, if Punk does unite, unify the titles, I think Miro should be a challenger for him at some point. Um, they've got sort of history together. Cause the, that Rusev guy comment from the, the podcast um, you could play off of that there's stuff you can do with Miro other than just make him TNT champion again that Rusev guy I remember that yeah um, I'm going to put this up because Alicia I, you and I are going to we're going to be an interesting topic it may not be a popular opinion, option but I think it's time for someone else to have the TBS championship they have booked Jade so strong I don't know who they're going to have dethrone her I was making this point to you last night and I have I'm not technically totally against undefeated records, but when it gets this far, it gets, I don't want to say silly is not the right word. It just gets, it feels like it's too much to handle. And like, I know they're not WCW and I know they're not WWE, right? But we've seen undefeated streaks and man, they ended badly. And I just, I don't know if there's a good way that would satisfy all of us, make her not look weak and not kill her. What is a satisfying way to take this belt off her? Come on, man. Get uh, get Britt out there with the taser, man. <laughs> <laughs> and have the sound effect over the PA system. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm fine with, with Jade still being champion because I don't feel like there is a cemented uh, next up yet. Um, and I know we talked about that last night, but as good as I think Athena is, I don't think that Athena is the one to beat her. Um, I wouldn't be upset if she beat her, but I personally think that Jade should continue to hold that title until there is a undeniable challenger in front of her. Um, and I just don't think that's happened yet. Um, I, I know this switches gears real quick, but this, this intrigued me. Carlos says Mira keeps talking about this god of his. You think it's his wife? No. no. Uh, and she shows... No, but that that poses an interesting question. What if this whole time he's not been talking about, you know, the big bearded dude hanging out in the clouds? What if he's talking about a flesh and blood wrestler or manager that we don't know is coming or maybe they don't know is coming yet? What's the chances of that happening? Um, I I don't think that's what it is. I think it's a I think I think he's it's a religious gimmick. Hmm. Um. I mean, he he's clearly referenced God, and there's only one woman for me. Because I mean, he he referenced that this week with the Julia Hart exchange. That was so uh, funny. It's, it's two separate things. <laughs> I popped for that. I did. I pro wrestling termed for that. I couldn't help it. It cracked me up, man. I thought it was I, funny. I, 
I don't think we'll see Lana to answer the second half of that question. Mm. Um, I, I think that the mystique of him constantly referencing her, but we not actually seeing her is is just too good to give us the visual. Because I mean, that was the same thing for a long time with Sister Abigail. It, it's it's cool when he referenced her a lot, but then when you make it a physical person, it's not nearly as interesting. Is it just me or when we saw who was, I don't remember the character's name when she was with, uh, and now I'm blanking the, the, the woman on the throne and she had the, the hair and the, the, the face. Remember she was sort of like demonic or what? And now she's like a, she's like wearing pajamas and stuff in the ring. I don't know. Oh yeah. Uh, you're talking about a uh, Wendy Chu. Yeah. I mean, that's, I was like, they couldn't have done Sister Abigail. Look at this. Like, why didn't they never, like, they make her a flesh and blood? You know what I mean? They they try. Remember when they uh they were t- subtly teasing the stuff with Alexa, and then that kind of went nowhere, and then Alexa got possessed. Uh, weird times. <laughs> and and uh, it was when uh, who was it? was it, was Bray got hurt because it was supposed to be a match, and they were teasing that she was going to show up. And we all thought it was going to be Bray in a dress. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the TLC match that never happened yeah. with, yeah, with yeah. Finn Balor, and that turned into AJ and Balor. That's right. Um, unpopular opinion. I, I say put Bray in the dress when all that was happening. Bray in hear, the dress. hear me out. I'm talking about, I'm talking about <laughs> something that looked like a dress that looked like it was just pulled out of a grave. The hair's in his eyes. He's not talking. He's not... And and at first the crowd wants to laugh, but then they're like, "Okay, this is kind of like the grudge, like this is kind of terrifying because he had the hair to pull it off, and you're already thinking, is he just messing around?" Or honestly, I think if give it to him and tell him go out there and scare every kid in the front row, I think he could have done it. Maybe, but I have no interest in him cutting promos like that or talking. That that sounds. Oh no no no, never talk. That's the key. Yeah, just. Keep it to where, and then have every wrestler around him. They could play at the supernatural hoo ha, but then also say, "There's something seriously wrong with him." Like he's Bray in a dress. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I'm sorry. I think I would never have said that about anybody else but him. But I think Bray can do anything. I think he could pull anything off. Honestly, yeah, I miss Bray. Um, I can't wait till he comes back. Chad, I did forget about you, my friend. You hit me with this 20 minutes ago. What do you think about Hook there, Phil? What's your opinion on Hook? I thought the way that they did his uh, FTW championship win was perfect. Um, they couldn't have handled that any better. Um, everything about it was great. The commentary of Taz saying this is surreal for him was a legit emotional moment. Him being speechless as his son won and that backstage segment he did, just wholesome com- content. Um yeah, I, I think Hook is great. I think they've got to start putting him in some real feuds soon, but I think the kid's got it. I think he has a great presentation. I think his uh, offense looks great. I know, man, he has he has a fantastic look. Great theme music, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I like Hook a lot. I mean, I, I think it helps that he doesn't talk. I think that's, that's one part of his game he doesn't have to worry about because he doesn't do it. And I... I don't think this is one of those instances. Well, he needs a mouthpiece. No, he doesn't. Leave it alone. Yeah, I Let- mean, the real test for him would was putting him with Dan House and seeing like, does this work? Because that could have easily damaged him. Putting yep. him next to what looks like a comedy gimmick, and he's such a straight guy, um, and yet he's still just as popular as ever. As a matter of fact, kind of feels like he's more popular. Um, he may be now, but when he shoved Dan Housen that night, he got booed for that. Because I'm telling you right now, I don't know how, I don't know who out pops Dan Housen and that company. I mean, they got a lot. Moxley's huge. I'm not disputing Punk is huge, but you have Punk come out and slap Dan Housen in the face and see who gets booed for that. I do Dan Housen. I'm telling you, man, there's something about that guy. I think his YouTube channel helps him a lot because he's so freaking funny. His videos are hilarious. How he never cracks up is beyond me. Like, he's committed to that character, dude. He's committed in the way that Dustin was committed to Gold Dust and didn't break character for years. Yeah. Like, good stuff. Uh, everybody, please welcome Big Nate Dog to the show. Phil, I didn't tell you this, but remember that great thriller episode we did? My audio is garbage. 
and Phil's thinking again with the audio. Oh, I know, no. I know. Oh, uh, no. I'm uh, gonna see it. I know it was a good episode too. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know how good it was. Is is Nathan gonna be in New York? He's not coming. Shame. Uh, he's gonna be in Georgia when we're in New York. So yeah, he's yeah. Poor he's, shame. Yeah, he's staying this this side of the Mason Dixon, and I'll be in New York come September. I like using that line, even though I don't have geography in front of me. It's just I still, something I like to use. I, I still think that is one of the wildest Rocky uh, uh, references when they put Mason Dixon, <laughs> <laughs> and his nickname was the line. The line, yeah, it's perfect. Mason, the line, Dixon. I mean. <laughs> If we're going to go there, let's talk about a, a, a Rocky's opponent's names. Clubber Lang, Apollo Creed. What else we got? Um, Thunderlips. Forget that. Um, um, Ivan Drago. That's the most normal name out of the bunch. Are you kidding me? Right, come on. Cl- Clubber, a uh, Southside brawler. True. Chicago Zone. Clubber Lang. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Clubber Lang. <laughs> Because he made a crack about uh, he made a crack about uh, um, Adrian in the promo. I remember because Rocky went at him. <laughs> hey woman, hey woman. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you sit in your night in your bed every night dreaming about a real man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, I don't care anybody says about Mr. T. He was very good in that film, dude. I'm sorry. Come on, tremendous. I I refuse to call him a villain in that movie because he was right the entire time. Stop ducking me. I I have a right to a challenge. Stop ducking me because you and your coach are afraid of me because you know and I know that I can beat you. And then he proved it right away by absolutely annihilating Rocky. <laughs> You're one of those guys that takes a movie and flips it and says, wait a minute. Clubber what was if not the villain in the that vi- movie, man. Yep. <laughs> He was not the villain in that movie. Rocky was hot-dogging for a good hour into that movie, and Clubber came out and stomped him out in that first fight. <laughs> it's like that It's like that old theory about uh, 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 Raiders of the Lost Ark did not need Indiana Jones because he had no impact on the story whatsoever because the Nazis still got the amulet. They still opened the ark, and everything bad still happened. He didn't prevent anything bad from happening in that film at all. And you're like, hey, man, I'm an Indiana Jones fan, and that's that's – Holy crap, it's true. He didn't do anything. It's the truth. So, yeah. How do we get off on all that? Yeah, come on, man. Clubber, Clubber was number one contender, and that guy was ducking him. All he wanted was his shot. That's it. He was not a bad guy. Oh, Tommy Morrison. I forgot about him. Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn. I forgot about that name. Rocket That's still a... It's just, geez, such a bad Oh, movie. it's so bad. <laughs> We're going to fight in the street. You're going to what now? Yeah, it's... no. Nah. Yeah. Is Tommy Morrison still with us? Has he passed? Because I didn't he have HIV? I think he did pass. Yeah, I think so. I could be wrong. The nephew of John Wayne. Uh, hopefully we're not uh we're not killing Tommy Morrison. Uh, I hope he is actually dead and we're just not I know, right? <laughs> not just saying he's dead. What I just say one word, six letters, Google. Here I am not doing it. Someone Google that for me. See if Tommy Morrison's still with us. There you go. Passed away September first, twenty thirteen. Wow, he's been gone for a while. Wow. That's a downer on the show. My apologies. Um, Actually, who brought up Tommy's name? It's your fault. We'll blame you. Someone mentioned cheeseburger. Let me just tell you something, Tim, in all due fairness. Everybody likes cheeseburger. All of us. I don't care what you eat all the time. Cheeseburger is awesome. I like that guy a lot, dude. World I like famous, his style. World famous cheeseburger. Yeah, come on, man. Telling you can't you. have ROH without like the Briscoes. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay Lethal, uh, Gresham, Dalton Castle. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> uh, Dalton Castle, uh, uh, and, and Cheeseburger. I feel like they are essential to Ring of Honor because they they meant so much to that company over the last yeah. few years. So it was great to see him again. It was great to see uh, Prince Nana again as well. Dude, I uh, we went to uh, three Ring of Honor shows. I think it's three when they came to Carolinas. Always a good show, like really good show, and like. Before AW was a thing, and I'm like, man, this is there's so much fun. The crowd was not never as big as a WWE show, or even a WWE house show, but that made it feel more special to me. It just didn't make it feel as big time. Still, TV production still looked good. Uh, we were there that night in Concord when, uh, oh man, I'm gonna uh, when uh, Flip Gordon got hurt. 
uh, that night. Because, uh, man, when he landed, we're like, we're like, oh, he's hurt. You just tell sometimes by the way they land. Yeah. And he was working. Um, I'm going to forget who he was working now. I can't remember. Yeah, but we were also at the show when he came back. So that was a that was pretty cool to see. So, yeah. Um, I miss the old Ring of Honor, to be honest with you. We'll see what they do with the next one. Uh, we'll end the 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 main conversation on that. What what's what's I was going to ask you what's the latest? You may or may not know. What's up with Ring of Honor? Are we moving toward a TV deal? Do they get Friday Night Rampage? Perhaps is it going to be a separate entity? What's going on here? Do we know anything? Uh, I don't know. I hope that we hear something soon. I have to assume that uh, part of the reason they put the title on Claudio was uh, to help with the TV deal. I don't know. It is it is weird in retrospect that uh, Claudio was kind of seen as a guy with WWE that wasn't that marketable, and then he gets to AEW, and you're talking about marketing an entire brand off of him. I don't know how well that works, but I don't know. Um, I hope we get something soon because I feel like they need a they need a a, a, a team soon. They need a they need a way to establish Ring of Honor as something independent of AEW again. Pick a night. If you had to pick a night, what night do you give them? Thursday. Uh, if you want to compete with Impact, I'll um, oh, put put it on. I mean Impact. Put, put it what, on Wednesday. What? <laughs> oh wow yeah uh what about uh um what's impact usually do they even do they get half a million viewers what's what's i have no idea i don't yeah. i usually watch it on youtube because i watch it uh through their youtube subscription because i don't have access um me neither yeah i have no idea what their ratings look like uh uh thursday might not be a bad night uh but come on, man. Re- reignite the Wednesday Night Wars, man. Put it on Wednesday. <laughs> Running against his own company. Do like a WCW invasion where Vince still owned everything. It's an invasion, pal. Really? Are you sure? Or or, um, or they could put it on Tuesday. What else is what else is showing on Tuesday? I nothing I that I know of. Day. I don't know if it's a <laughs> thing. Uh, new episodes of the 6 M podcast drop on Tuesdays. Well done, Phil. There is that to contend with. You can spend your Tuesday even listening to that. New episode just came out this past Tuesday. If you haven't downloaded it, shame on you. It's a good one. Count so, yeah. program it, man. Same. Got to push. Got to hype. I do nothing but shill. And by the way, let me ask you a question. When did shill become a bad word? You kidding me? Uh, uh, because some people don't know what a shill actually is, and they use the term incorrectly. Like, people use a lot of terms incorrectly online. I mean, that's fair. Uh, this past Tuesday's episode was Mask of the Phantasm, by the way, kids. Go take a listen. Have a listen. That's it. Show, show can be a bad thing, depending on what it is. Um, mm. Like, I mean, of course, you've got the Simpson episode when Krusty turns into a show. And that's after he told everybody to burn their money. That's the infamous <laughs> episode with Don't You Hate Pants? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, You're flat out quoting Simpsons to me. That's good stuff. Um, so, no, it, it depends on what you're shilling and what principles that what principles you had before that that you're throwing away to be a show um there's of course there's like i said there's context and there's nuance around these things that people ignore because it's Mm. the internet it's true uh well kids there you have it for the main stuff that i want to talk about okay um let's go ahead and open this floor up we've kept you about an hour and some change we're going to take it home in a few minutes the floor is wide open that's Ray Dean's signal to get busy. So uh, I expect that to, you know what's coming. You don't even play. Uh, it's coming, kids, so prepare yourselves. And plus, after this, I got to get downstairs. The niece and nephew are here, and uh, uh, I got to pay attention to the fam. Phil, let me just tell you, while, while Ray prepares this question, dude, the traffic situation was murder, dude. Murder. Like, I'm on the interstate, murder. Cars as far as the eye can see. I'm like, what's going on here? So I took an exit. That took, uh, you know, all day to get off the exit because everybody else said, who should take the exit? So we get off the exit, get onto <laughs> another highway. And guess what happens way up a- ahead of me in the highway? A massive accident. I'm not done. Wow. So we finally get around. This is all we're moving three inches at a time in everyone's cars. We get around the accident, take the left. We're going up this other road. I'm, I'm going to take this shortcut. Guess what? There's a tree down across the road. I'm like, I'm not even meant to get home today. What's going on? Anyway, we finally got here. There was a storm here, and I guess it just uprooted everything. 
Chris says, great show. Tom Clark, enjoy wrestling, everyone. Have a good weekend. Chris, with a K, thank you, my friend, for watching as always. I'm sorry I didn't get to your questions, dude. Uh, Ray, don't let me down, baby. Ray is furiously typing. Don't get me singing that song. It's addictive. Shane says, Tom and Phil, who's on your Mount Rushmore of Lucha Libre wrestlers? Ray has got to be on there. He's probably the most famous luchador of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Right right now, I feel like you've got to put Ray Phoenix on there. Ray Phoenix is getting to the point where mm. I feel like he's one of the greatest luchadors ever. Uh, I don't know if I can do this question justice because I'm not as invested in, in long-time classic Mexican pro wrestling as I am the States, to be honest, or Japanese. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of, because I, I didn't watch a lot of old luchador wrestling, a lot of my stuff is probably recency bias. Um, like, I mean, Viking Go is another name. Like, guy is just incredible. Uh, How about uh, Chava Guerrero Sr.? Can we call him Lucha Libre? He wasn't masked, right? But... I don't know if I'm thinking about that style. He's one of the first. Hector was one of the first guys to bring that style to the NWA. The first that I can remember. He was doing things in the NWA in the 80s that I, was that they're doing now. And I'm like, what did he just do? As a kid, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, why am I drawing blanks on names? I really am. Silver King, maybe. or But he's like a heavyweight. I can't say Mill Mascaris because the everything that's come out about Mill over the years has been what's well, the famous Bruce Bricher story? No job. Yeah. No job. He wouldn't uh, job to anybody. Uh I don't know, man. Uh I am a big La Sombra guy. Andrade Ooh. is Andrade is incredible. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I put him on my Mount Rushboard, but I just wanted to reference him because he's great. And the tornado tag match this week was fantastic. Yes, it was. Very good. Tim says, he's he's asked me this a few times. Did you interview, you didn't interview Okada. If you had, I would have known about it. I didn't interview him. I was in the same room when he was Oof. doing the media scrum. I didn't get a chance to ask him a question, but I was in the media scrum uh, with Okada. Again, but I've tweeted this at the time, but when you see Okada in person and you see like him in a suit and just his presentation, um, there's almost a regalness to him. There's a, do you, way that there's something special to him and you can tell why he's the guy why he's the guy that is the face of the company man it's like it's i mean he's in the same room with jay white and jay white is the champion but you could still look at okada next to jay white and go okada's the guy it's like uh iverson at the uh, hall of fame induction talking about the first time he saw jordan there was a physical aura around him oh, and everybody starts laughing that. And AI with a straight face goes, no, no, I'm not kidding. There was a physical aura around him. You could see it. Oh, yeah. Good yeah, I, you, can, you, can, you can see it with Okada. And that's not to, that's not to knock Jay White at all, because in my yeah. opinion, Jay White is the top heel in wrestling right now. Um, Agreed. Watching him work the room in that scrum was amazing. Very good. Ray's here. All right, unpack. Time to unpack the suitcase. Red Man or Busta Rhymes? And part two, Pete Rock and CL Smooth or EPMD. God, you're make it harder, Ray, for God's sake. And if Adam Cole gave you a gift package of a new chair for your office, thank you. Nice callback. And a five hundred dollars Starbucks gift card and offered another for a friend. Can I have and later one to get rice pudding? Oh my God. Ray, this is a weird one. Um, I'm not a rice pudding fan. You can have all you want. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> uh oh, i'm not a big starbucks guy I'm more of a duncan man myself but uh, they have something called a caramel crunch frappuccino it is heaven in a cup i promise you that it's exquisite is what it is but i'll share you can have some bucks um i'll go busta I'm and i'll go, go i'm gonna go red man because i think red man is extremely underrated I agree with that, but I can't not pick Busta. It's like the one, it's like, uh, what was that? It was like, uh, you, you always pick uh, pick Haku if you pick a guy to win a fight. I got it. It's hard for me to choose against Busta Rhymes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see that. Uh, and then uh, I'll go, uh, this is harder. I'll go Pete Rock and CL Smooth. 
I am going to agree with you and go Pete Black as Theo's one. The uh, the creator, love that freaking song. Um, if I got the name right, I was just listening to it the other day. I listened to a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, Ray, well done as always. Uh, Alma says, with CM Punk coming back on A-Dub Wednesday night, will we see Punk versus John Mox at the next pay-per-view or later on? We're talking about All Out, right? I have to assume that we will see him at All Out in Chicago. Uh, he hopped around on that one foot to show you can put weight on it. I thought he was going to do the worm. Um, uh, but I feel like that was the signal to go, this is our main event for our upcoming pay-per-view. The worm would have been great. Would have been that epic. Been amazing. Oh my Just god. Hit the... That would have been great. Uh Shane says you have to watch the AE biography on Lex Luger. It's a great show. I have not checked that out. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the biographies from this season. Um I wasn't the biggest fan of some of them from last year. Mm. Uh uh, I did enjoy the Austin one, even though the Austin one painted a very beautiful picture of Austin. <laughs> um, a very unrealistic picture of Austin. Um, I, <laughs> I, I hated the way that they smeared Macho Man in that episode last year. I just, mm. I hated it. Um, but some of the other episodes were better. Um, I will check that one out. Um, and you know what? I'll say this in any time, anyone that has is a celebrity, especially that has gotten in trouble, suddenly finds Jesus somewhere, they immediately get cracked on. And sometimes with good reason, kids, let's be honest. Sometimes it's a self-defense mechanism, so people stay off their backs. But since everything happened with Lex, I've not heard or read one person say it's an act, it's BS, behind the scenes, he's a he's a jerk. Never. So no matter what anybody wants to say about him or think about him, it looks like he really did find peace somehow with everything that happened. He's never run from responsibility. He's always owned up to everything that happened. I mean, it still doesn't take away from what happened, but still, I mean, you know, I'm more inclined to give him a break than I am perhaps some other people. Yeah. So, and plus he's never really angled to get on TV or get a sympathy hug or anything like that. He's just, whenever he's interviewed, he's very gracious and everything. So I appreciate that. Uh, One more, and I hate to end on this one, but I never did get your thoughts on this. Uh, what retired wrestling would you like to see? I don't know if I, if, Ricardo, I'm not sure, brother, if I have a good answer for you, but I put your comment up because of the flare thing. Do you have any comments on the flare thing at all? I did not watch it, sir. Um, but yeah, I did not watch it. I didn't really have any interest in watching, uh, that talk about a great card for that show. Yeah. That a star studded card for that, that show, but I did not watch it. Retired wrestlers, I think I would like to see one more match from. That is easily Paige. I feel like she deserves a proper Mm. send-off. I would love to see her have one more match. I don't know if I have one, to be honest with you. God, everyone comes out of retirement anymore. It's hard to say, with exception of Paige. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Yeah, Paige is a big one for me. Yeah, interesting. Um, Yeah, I... uh, Ooh, I got a lot of thoughts on the flare thing, but I'll save until another time. Um, I will say this. I'm glad he made out of, made out of it fairly in one piece. Um, Sounds like the, they made a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> and Conrad Thompson may, may not be done promoting wrestling shows because made a lot of money. But, you know, I'll, I will say always, you know, Conrad's catchphrase is, hey, hey, come at me, bro. Okay, my show started in 2014, and from episode one, I've introduced my shows with, hey, hey, what's up? So, come at me. I'm just saying. I got proof of ownership, and my, my best friend's a lawyer, so there you go. Um, There you go. What do you think, Phil? You got my back if Conrad comes for me? Can I tag out? Uh, sure. I, I, I don't <laughs> know who Conrad is bringing with him. If he's tagging in other other wrestlers, we might be in trouble. Conrad's got some weight on you. I'm just saying. He might be able to take you. It's, you know. Ooh. Okay. Here I am throwing shade at Conrad Thompson. I don't mean to. Yeah, Conrad's great. Maybe I do. I, I, I've, I've, I used to listen to podcasts that he co-hosted for a while, and it's like, 
sometimes the way he would speak about certain female wrestlers and phrases he would use, I'm like, yikes. Uh, so yeah, wasn't really a fan of that, but, uh, mm. all right. I'm just saying, I'll tell you off mic. I won't tell you right now. Cause it's brutal. <laughs> you wait, and see, I'll tell you, we get off the air. You probably have heard it. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, we'll get out of here, kids. Phil, before we go, tell the good people out there where they can find you on the internets. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at PhilDL616. Of course, you could listen to Grapsity every Saturday at noon Eastern on Fightful's YouTube channel. And that is with me and Will Washington, Righteous Reg. You can also find my writing at Bleacher Report. Well done. Phil, thank you as always, my friend. Thanks for coming on today, dude. Thanks for having me, as always. Of course. All right, kids, that's Phil Lindsay. Everybody go follow him. Check out Grapsody. Thank you, as always, for watching. We're going to take it home and get out of here. Everybody, do me a favor. Go have the best weekend ever, all right? And I mean that sincerely. I'm going to go enjoy the fam and have a good evening. You guys have the best evening. We will see you next week, barring any traffic problems or issues, all right? We'll see you next time, kids. We appreciate you. See you next time, kids. Tom Clark's main event. <laughs>